This year's inductee's name is Martha Berry. I want to tell a little about how I began. On my own home place in the foothills of the Blue Ridge in northwest Georgia was a little log cabin which I'd fitted up as a study. I'd hoped to become a writer. Sitting in this cabin on a Sunday afternoon reading, I heard the voices of children coming down from the hillside. I called them in and I asked them what they did on Sundays and they said nothing. And so I told them to come back and bring their brothers and sisters. Well, they came and not only brought their brothers and sisters, but babies and dogs. And this little cabin was a beehive of humanity. I rode my little pony over the hills and visited many cabin homes. I realized that here we could find some of the very best blood in America, true aristocrats. They just needed an opportunity. I began thinking about who I could get to help me with them and give them a chance in life. I didn't find anybody, and one Sunday I thought of myself. Martha Berry was born in 1866 and was a native of Rome, Georgia. She founded the Berry Schools, presently known as Berry College, in 1902. She used her 80-acre dowry to charter the Boys Industrial School. This boarding school educated Southern Highlander mountaineers in practical farming and educational skills, with the goal of helping them to improve their families' small, inefficient, tradition-bound farms, as well as to provide them with leadership and efficient Christian citizenship in country communities. The Berry School seal revealed Martha Berry's fourfold educational philosophy. The Bible for prayer, the lamb for learning, the plow for labor, and the cabin for simplicity. Berry's life work became part of the Southern movement of the Progressive Era. The movement's leaders advocated practical, mechanical, and agricultural training as a means of uplifting the South. Her focus on the education of the Appalachian children also embraced the Americanization ideologies of reformers such as Teddy Roosevelt, who dismissed the inhabitants of Appalachia as poor white boys from the mountains. She believed their education was vital in making the South more industrial and progressive. Martha Berry strived very hard to create an educational program out of scratch, and she succeeded. Berry's vision of education transformed a one-room schoolhouse into a beautiful 28,000-acre campus bearing her name. Since the beginning of the Berry College, its campus has been known for its beauty. Even more today, Berry College maintained its natural beauty and is looked upon highly by other colleges and universities. Martha Berry's interest in better educating Appalachian farm children lasted until her death in 1942, but that did not stop her legacy. Her love and compassion for her students and the college will always be present. This can be seen in the early days when there were just a few buildings and students, or in the present day as it strives ahead into the 21st century. This remarkable woman administered a school that educated thousands of Appalachian students and continues to educate students in better agricultural application. Barry's agriculture graduates of yesterday and today have grown and gone on to become educators, extension agents, producers, veterinarians, and agricultural researchers, continuing Ms. Barry's vision to help others and contribute to society. Upon young men and women like yourselves, rest the future of the South. When you leave Barry to go back to your communities and carry with you our spirit of hard and intelligent work, you will be helping to restore the South to that great and powerful place in the nation which is rightly hers. This is my hope, my dream, and my prayer. In this Berry's centennial year, Martha Berry deserves recognition for her commitment to Georgia agriculture, and she is a worthy addition to the Hall of Fame.